the zoo today. Thought we'd give it a try. Have a look, see what the uh, sanitation duties are with yeah. this new COVID crap. Oh, there's some marks on the floor already, yep. just near the entrance. Sure, yep. And on the floor, they've already got some uh, social distancing going on. Stay safe distance. And as we see straight away, they have sanitation mm. stations. On the entrance, on each side. You have to be, you'll be seated by a member of the staff, but I'm going to have to ask to sit at the front, so I can say I'm a scooter, otherwise I can't get up the steps to get to the back row. Yeah, that's one thing, but there is plenty of disabled seating, well, rows at the front where they've taken out the street seats anyway, so you can easily park up your scooters or wheelchairs. That's all right. Am I going okay to sit at the front? Of course you are, yeah. If you go to um, the far side of the front row, that... you can sit together there. That's not... Just avoid the uh, seats that have got the tape on. Yeah, no worries. Um, Come in, shop. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first line show of the day here at Flamingo Land. It's nice to see more faces than yesterday. And to be honest, it's nice to see faces at all because there were points where there was no one here for quite a while. So, we're focusing this show on Merlin here. He's one of four sea lions that we've got here at the zoo. He is the third oldest. His birthday is on the 22nd of June. So, I don't think that's that far away now. Yeah, I don't know what my mum's are, but I know it's not far away. Oh, my days are at the moment. Now, he likes to start every show off by giving you guys a nice big wave. First of all, you've all got to wave at him. So everyone, stick an arm in the air, wave it around. Come on, don't be afraid. That's everybody, which is brilliant. Do they get a wave back? Oh, yes. Apparently you do, which is lovely, of course. Now, one more thing before we really get cracking on with the show. Myself and Merlin, we love the sound of clapping. So if he does something well, you must clap and encourage his good behaviour. Get those hands together. Even better at the top there. Thank you very much. So, what we'll start off with, first of all, is a bit about training. We train the sea lions through a system called positive reinforcement. It basically means when they do an action correctly or something that we desire, we make it clear to them by rewarding them when they've done that. So it could be feeding them pieces of fish, giving them a pat on the back, vocal praise, the response from our audience. They do hear that regularly enough. They understand it means they've done something correctly. So using that method, the first thing we teach them is known as target training. That's a target, quite simply a stick with a point on the end. And this activity is going to seem really strange, it'll make sense shortly. This is the first ever thing we teach them to do. It's that simple. Holding their nose on a target like that, or touching the target, should I say. Now within time, it doesn't take long getting them to touch it regularly and rewarding them for doing so, making it clear, they'll start to follow the target around as you can see here. I have noticed he puts his whiskers up a lot, almost like he's associating it with balancing the basketball. So I do wait for his whiskers to go down because it gives him more of a chance to have that contact with the target, which is what we desire. Yeah, you could give him a little clap. That was a lovely little demonstration from him. Well done, Merle. So what we're aiming for when we train them to follow a target is this. 
to start to progress to move away from their stand. And basically, it starts to act like an invisible lead almost. Now, if you want to train the sea lions to lay down, if you need to check them all over, it's quite hard to get them to stay still. They are very excitable animals that aren't good at sitting still. So one way that's very useful related to target training to get them to stay in a certain position is getting them to lay down. So quite simply, we put the target on the ground and the sea lion follows it there like so, all because, of course, we've encouraged them to do so. Now, this allows us to check the sea lions. Keep your nose on it, Merlin. Good boy. This allows us to check the sea lions all over their body. They're not nervous. They're not stressed. The vet can look at them. We've prepared them for this type of health check. In fact, they enjoy it because we've made it an activity for them. Now, this is a very good demonstration. He stayed perfectly on that in the end. Very well done to you, Merlin. You stood on my foot there. Well done. Good boy. That was a very good example. Because he does move his face about a bit now and again. So we've ended on a good note there, which is the best way to always end when you are training animals. He's going to do a front flipper stand now. So he's going to try and transfer all of his body weight just onto his two front flippers. Are you ready? Play those toes. Beautiful. Now the question is, can you do it again? Whoa, careful. That's definitely high enough. <laughs> that was very high indeed, in fact. So that shows you how strong these animals are in the chest area. Of course, how strong their front flippers are. They're very big front flippers, particularly compared to a seal, which their front flippers are much smaller. And also flexibility of their spine. They're very flexible for chasing prey in the wild. So animals such as fish, for getting away from predators, because they can be eaten themselves, unfortunately, for them. And of course, getting around obstructions in the natural environment. OK, so on to some more fun stuff now. Balancing. This is an activity that is very common to see at any sea line show. Merlin did struggle with this at first, but he's become very good at balancing an object on his nose. So, rather than placing the ball on his nose, what I'm going to do is see if he can catch it. So think about this. He can catch a basketball with his nose. Ready, Merl? Hopefully you're going to prove me right now. Ready? Catch that. Wow. Well done. A bit of a shaky start. Wasn't sure whether that was going to stay there. <laughs> But it looks like he's gaining better control of the ball. He does tend to move about quite a lot, but towards the end, he'll sort of become a bit more stationary. <laughs> now, what he's doing here is using his whiskers. They are very sensitive to movement and vibration. So every time the ball tries to roll off his nose, he feels it on his whiskers and adjusts his head. It's that simple, really. Now, you might be thinking, why do they have whiskers? It helps them catch prey in the wild, so imagine they couldn't see in the water, it was too murky for them to use their eyesight to find food. They can actually use their whiskers to pick up the motion that a fish's tail makes as it swims along in the water. So they can't find food even if they can't use their eyes to locate it. Now he's held that there for quite some time, he's broke the record and certainly sort of become more smoother with his actions and his neck. Well done to you Merlin, that was a fantastic balance. So you've got to think about this, if you've got pets at home, you'll know that it's important to keep them stimulated because obviously you can end up with behavioural problems and damaging some of your items at home if they're not kept occupied. So obviously we always are having to keep these animals stimulated and occupied. Changing activities, adding new things to the water in terms of enrichment that are safe. With changing activities and the balancing, we can actually throw the ball into the water. So let's see if we can manage to retrieve it. Now, obviously, this requires a lot more concentration <laughs> and effort. <laughs> well, he's supposed to be going back up the stand, but he does all this zigzag swimming and ends up here, there, and everywhere in the pool. But he got there. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> you know what? Out of interest, I'm going to throw it in the water again and see if he uses the same method or pattern of swimming to get back to the stand because I do find it very interesting different areas of the pool that I can throw the ball he'll swim differently back towards the stage apparently it's much easier from there very well done to you that was much quicker than the last one <laughs> but what I'm getting at is that training animals is stimulating for them you're teaching them new things to keep them occupied in this captive environment it's a very very important part of our job particularly with being animal trainers so one last thing related to the basketball, 
will surprise you. He's the only sea lion here at the show that can do this now. Ready? So, of course, he's caught it well. A good save there. Now, let's see if you can point your toes as high as you can, Mill. Still keeping the basketball on your nose. Beautiful! Wasn't that brilliant? He's even doing it when I'm not asking him. Go on, see if you can hold it. One last go. Well done, Merlin. That was fantastic. Very well done to you. And again, he's the only one here that can do that now. So, quite the little star. We'll do some hoop catching next. I'm terrible at throwing the hoops, but he is great at catching them. Hopefully, one day we'll make a good double act. Are you ready, Merlin? So, he's got to catch all five of them over his head. Now, these animals can strike out their neck pretty much in any direction they want. They can easily contract it when needed and expand it. Very useful if they can launch their head out to catch fish, to grab onto them with their teeth. This final one, I'm going to add a flick to it. Let's see if we can manage to catch it and see if I can manage to actually throw it in the right direction. Ready? Wow, what a save! I'm quite pleased with that throw as well. <laughs> Very welcome to you, Merlin. Now, I really like the balancing activity, so if you don't mind, I'm going to show you one more object. So, changing the object and balancing with Merlin. So, it's the American football, which... Where's he gone? There he is. Uh, which he's actually very good at balancing now. I'm going to actually put it on his nose in the upright position, which most of the time I find hard to let go of the ball, knowing whether he's actually going to be able to support it there. Most of the time, he actually keeps it, his nose on it there and manages to take it all the way back to the stand in that position. Even jumping out of the water. Are you ready, Millie? Are you watching? It's here. That's it. Ready? Well done. You always feel like you can't let go of it. And he's really got that point of the ball in quite an awkward place on his nose. And he's still managing to keep it there. Well done, Merlin. That was legendary, that. Well done to you. So, he's going to show you his backward somersault next. He's the only sea lion here at the show that can do this one as well now. So, down you come. Stay in your starting position. Good boy. He's going to go... Stay over there. He's going to go head over tail, above the water, roughly somewhere in the centre of the pool. Don't blink and get your cameras ready. Even get them on slow-mo if you're feeling like you want a good video. Ready? Go! As high as you can! Beautiful. Really putting that flexibility to the test. Well done to you, Merlin. Now, in case you did miss it, I'm going to give you one more opportunity to get those cameras ready now, guys. I've just recently managed to get someone to film it for me on slow-mo because I quite like those types of videos. Wait there. Ready, everyone? Ready, Merlin? Go! Head over tail! That was better than the first one. Definitely. Merlin, give yourself a clap for that. <laughs> Very well done to you, Merle. He can do a little impression of a star. You have been a star so far. Mm -hmm. That's his version anyway. We'll show you some differences between seals and sea lions now. So, one difference is the ears. Sea lions, like Merlin here, have ex good boy. They have external ear flaps on the side of their head. You can probably see that from where you sat. They have a name, they're called Pinner. Whereas a seal has an ear hole, usually covered with fur. Another difference is the size of the front flippers. I mentioned it earlier on in the show. So, an animal of a, a sea lion like Merlin here, have a, can I have your flipper? That's it. Can I have a front flipper about the size of my arm. Whereas a seal, their front flippers are about the size of my hand. I want your flipper. Good boy. Which is obviously quite a big difference between the two. Now, this leads us to a third difference. You've already seen him walking about and know he's a sea lion. What he's going to do now is show you an impression of how a seal moves on land. And this, of course, is a very good one, considering he is a sea lion. They wriggle along on their belly, much like a giant caterpillar. Remember, their front two flippers are only very small. With, <laughs> with such a heavy body, they certainly can't move as quickly as a sea lion can on land. And a good impression there. That was very well done to you, Merlin. So, we're going to move back to the hoops and doing a retrieve from the water now, just to make it a bit different for him. I'm always trying to change 
the order in which I do the show and use different activities or sometimes miss certain activities out. So the sea lions never know what's going to come next, basically, and they're not predicting our actions. Sometimes he does forget the fifth hoop. It looks like he's managed to bring all five of them back. Very well done to you. And that was in record speed, Merle. Now, unfortunately, we are reaching the end of this particular sea lion show. But Merlin here has got a grand finale that he'd like to show you all. You may have noticed the pink ball suspended above the pool. In a moment, he's going to try and hit that ball with his nose. He can make a bit of a splash, particularly for the family there. I don't think it'll go that far, but it normally goes in that direction. If it is going to go anywhere, just to give you a heads up. Now, he has been quite out of practice with this, but recently he's been doing very well with it. But we do have to give him a run-up, OK? Right, so you all know what he's going to do next. Let me get him into position. Can you come over here? That's it, good boy. We'll give him a countdown from three, everyone. Three, two, two one, go! He's already off! Well done! I think we need to raise that up for the next show. That was a fantastic jump for you, Merlin. You made that look very easy indeed. You know what? You were so good with that. Take your applause. What a little star. <laughs> What's a star? Now, unfortunately, we rarely have come to the end of the show. We do hope that you've enjoyed your time here at the show and, of course, being around the rest of Flamingo Land. It's fantastic that we can finally be open. Thank goodness. If you do want a poster pack that features our sea lions, you can get each one of their posters. Go over and see Josephine, our other member of staff there. They're already ready for you in a bag to consider social distancing and not everybody handling lots of different things. I mentioned at the start of the show, we've obviously got a one-way system, so you do need to leave out of that way on this occasion. And please obviously do it very carefully in your social groups. We'll have some more sea lions swimming around in the pool at the end. But from myself, the rest of the staff, and of course, lovely Merlin here, thank you very much for coming to join us, and goodbye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Right, and after every single show, or stopping around, or regularly just stop at a sanitation station and give your hands a wipe. Let's keep this COVID down. Got to keep that COVID away. If they knew, they'd be out of here in seconds, babe. Now we're at Flamingo Land here with the manager Ross. Uh, we just want a few questions on what he thinks the future of the park's going and how how uh, are you doing with your COVID uh, yeah, routines yeah, I, and stuff like that? Yeah, no problem. So in terms of the future of the park, I think uh, this is day two today. Today's Tuesday, uh, Tuesday morning, and it's our second day of reopening. Of, obviously after we had uh, shut, we've been shut since the 21st of March. So over three months, well, around three months now. So, um, so far so good. This is what we call a soft opening. So this for us is just, you know, getting a few people through the door. Uh, we've got a really small team here at the moment. Uh, and it's really, it's just myself, the zookeepers, you know, and a few admin staff. And uh, if you walk around the site today, you go for a tea or coffee or you grab some fish and chips. You know, the people that are serving behind the camera, there are admin staff, there are, um, you know, sort of support staff. So, you know, it, this is, this is the, the kind of the start of the new normal in a way, um, but we're just so excited to get people back here at the zoo um, and then see what the future brings. Well, that was it. As soon as we heard you were open, we thought we have to come and see you guys. Thank you. Yeah, you we guys appreciate going that. As soon as much as possible. Uh, another question. Uh, any idea when the theme park's going to be open? Hold on. I'll get my little crystal ball <laughs> out and I'll, uh, I'll have a look. So... Um, Honest, yeah, the honest answer is no, we don't know. And, um, and I'll be brutally honest, 
I think if you all watch the news and you watch the daily briefings, we will all find out at the same time. Um, I, the, the, the 4th of July is being talked about. That's the next date that's sort of coming up on the calendar. Um, we're hoping to get uh, an announcement in advance of that, but we are sort of pushing our efforts towards the 4th of July, but whether that means the theme park can open, whether that means the holiday resort can open, whether that means our bars, our pubs, our restaurants can open, we just don't know. So um, fingers crossed it's coming up soon, uh, but like I say, we will probably will find out at the same time and then we will do our best to let everyone know. But it's a, there's, a, there's a lot of work to do between today and the zoo opening and us kind of finally getting that theme park open. There's a, there's a long journey to go. Thank you very much, Russ. No problem at oh, all, thank fine. you. What's that one doing? You digging? Looking for scrubs. As with most of the areas, you'll find a hand washing station nearby. Try and keep your hands clean, people. This is a bit weird. Check out all these gulls on the thing here. Keep going. Watch them all disperse when we come through. Keep going. Ah, that's why we couldn't find uh, flamingos. They were chasing off all the other birds. One of the bonuses to this zoo is we've not found one step yet. All the viewing galleries like this have ramps up to them. So it's pretty excellent for anybody on wheels. Probably the family side on this side, and the uh, big adults on the other side. Yeah, yeah the boys. He's a little one. Yeah. Actually, there's yeah, some little ones on this side. They're gorgeous. They're probably a bachelor group. Ah, you know, eats grass. Yeah. You don't know that. Didn't know it puts legs like that. Yeah, because it can't get down otherwise. Oh, we've got an inquisitive here, a little one. Hello. Oh, he's coming right up. They're more interested in us than we are of it. Are you smiling? All your drinks machines are not in use. They're not allowing use of any of the vending machines. There are some refreshments on site, but they're counter-based only in a takeaway. You can't sit in. 
let's get something to eat. Let's check out what the fair is. I just want a jumbo sausage. Actually, I just want the fish. Decent prices there as well. We've gone for straight fish and a sausage and chips. Now, all cooked in beef dripping. So if you're vegetarian, you're out of luck. <laughs> but yeah, beef dripping, fish and chips. Just there, he's lying under the tree. He's lying under the tree. Can you see the elders at the back? As you can see, there are rides on the site of the zoo, but as like the playground, they are not open until uh, the new season opens with the park. Well, this is a new ride for this year. Well, we'll be opening now till next season. The irony of this coaster is it's been to two parks already but not been put up and it's third park ends up in a Covid crisis and can't open. Well that was Flamingo Land. The zoo. Yeah just the zoo at the moment because the park isn't open at this present time, but we're hoping it's going to be open for July 4th. Yeah. So, but the new uh, 10 looper looks like it's not going to be opening until next season though. Uh, so that's a bit of a downer. But still, when the park opens, we'll come and do a full disability review of the park. But as for the zoo... 10 out of 10. It's 10 out of 10, but that's without any of the rides. If the rides were included as well, there's a few rides like the uh, monorail that goes round. It's got the steps up to it. Yeah, it's got set steps up to it and stuff that some, yeah. something Michelle couldn't do if it was open but that's about it in the zoo the zoo is amazing oh yeah you can get around the zoo with any wheels as you saw as uh, going around there was no steps at all no really good for disabled found it really easy yeah really easy really easy the so, only thing that was a bit off was the toilet was a bit small <laughs> <laughs> to get me scooter into i uh, know but as for that we give this a the zoo a really good uh out of 10 yeah. for disability and for a zoo, I'm not really a big zoo fan, so I'm not really going to score it. But come and come and support these guys. They need to keep the park open. I love it. It's really good. We've got really good selection of animals. Yeah. Missing um, lions though and elephants. Yeah. <laughs> come on, elephant. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> but our next vlog should come from the gardens at Alton Tales. We've not yeah. done the gardens yet, so we thought we'd get them in. So we're going to nip... the park opens fully again. Yeah, we'll get them in, in like in about a week or two. And show you how to do the uh, park. Sorry, the um, gardens with a scooter. Watch it.
What's that? See you soon! Huh? Not You can't. Chinese, Corona, Covid, whatever it is.